All right, welcome to the experience. Uh, it's a weekly podcast we're going to be doing here, uh, mbebasketball.com. I'm Ray Myrna. I have my partner in crime, Lauren Kirschman, with me. And uh, the other night we had a big game down in Starkville, Mississippi. Uh, Mississippi State welcomed the Akron Zips in, and uh, Akron got the W. They handled Mississippi State pretty well. They won by 10 points. Uh, so I thought it was only fitting that we bring on Keith Dambrot, head coach of the Akron Zips. Uh, he's built quite a program there at Akron. And uh, Keith, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me, Ray. Uh, not a problem, not a problem. Hey, uh, watching that game the other night, Keith, it, it seems to me, could this be your most athletic team in your six years there? Well, for sure, overall, uh, size-wise and athleticism, we're, we're much bigger than we've ever been. And, uh, I'd say the only other team we had is when we had Romeo Travis and Jeremiah Wood. We had pretty good athleticism, but I think overall this team is more athletic. Yeah, is Diggs a kid who, who maybe gives you something, especially now that he's a little bit more mature and confident, kind of gives gives you something you haven't had, that 6'7 that type long kid? He really looked unstoppable. He looked like the best player on the floor the other night. Well, Ray, he's a guy that's worked very, very hard on his game. He's really improved his outside shooting. He's always been very good to the basket. Really defensively, when he wants to play, he's really good, too. He's a very talented guy. We just have to get him to do a few little things, you know, just the tough man things, and I think he could be one of the better players we've had. Is, is it a struggle defensively? Is it, is it as much of a struggle as it was early in his career, or is it coming is it coming easier for you to get him to sit down and play? Well, he's capable of guarding. He just, you know, he, re, he refused sometimes to make the hard square up, get the charge, take the loose ball. Uh, but he's a guy that, that really wants to be a good player. He, uh, he's a guy that really really has worked hard at his game, and he's a guy that I think is going to continue to get better. What about your point guard, Alex Abreu? He, he looked, he looked uh, fearless out there the other night. Is that a guy who you're going to have? I mean, you penciled him, him in the lineup from day one, no? No, we've been very pleased with him. You know, he has some issues to, that we continue to work with on, but... He's a terrific young man, and he's he's very deceptive. He doesn't look like he's as quick as he is, but when he's coming at you, he has a knack of going of going around guys, and he's done it against the the high majors. You know, he's he's a hard guy for those guys to handle because he's so little. Yeah, he went right into uh, those guards' chests a couple of times at the rim the other night. He 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 looked like a kid who who has no fear at all, and really adept at getting into the lane off the bounce, like you said. Well, it's a little misleading. He's only about five eight or nine, but he's got a six two wingspan, so he should be bigger. I don't know what happened to him. <laughs> Maybe, there you go. Well, probably the same thing that happened to each of us, huh? Well, it, the thing is, is, his mom's bigger than him, and his dad's about six two. So I don't, I don't know what happened, but you know, he's got a step brother that's six four, but. Thank God he isn't, because if he wasn't his size, he wouldn't be playing for Akron. There you go. There you go. Hey, is there a is there a type of kid that you target recruiting wise? Because I've got a a picture in my my mind of of the type of Akron kid that Keith Dambrot recruits. Could you go into that a little bit and maybe explain what you look for? Well, Ray, that's interesting that you say that. Uh, you know, as you know, we've done it a little unconventionally. We've had mostly four year guys here. We've never had a junior college player. Uh, we like guys that you know really are tough kids that really care about winning. Uh, we like guys that, uh, that that have a good basketball IQ, and of course, we really look hard for guys to shoot the ball. I think you know it's one thing to be athletic, but it's, it's not a track meet; it's a basketball game. So you have to have a good mix of athleticism, skill, and toughness. And those are the kind of guys that we've kind of built our program on. It, it, is there a set reason why why you stayed away from from junior college guys? Is is there someone that brought that to your attention and maybe you made a decision early on there that you weren't going to go for the quick fix? Well, really, when we first got the job, we had a really good sophomore class. We had Jeremiah Wood and Romeo Travis and Drew Joyce in that class. So we really didn't have to go that direction. And we just felt like that, uh, you know, if we could get them for four years and teach them our system, it was just a little bit better for us, you know, uh, you know, we could have a little more continuity, probably a little less up and down, and trying to be more consistent, we thought, with the four-year guys. Hey, what about Big Zeke? He seems, 
I don't know, man, maybe middle of last year, did he kind of catch fire a little bit and start playing the way you thought he always would or he was capable of? Well, you know, this guy's a lot different than what I had with LeBron. Uh, and when LeBron was, was young, he was, he was a straight ascension to the top. With Zeke, there's some peaks and valleys, but the thing that I always knew about Zeke is he wants to be good, number one. He's a terrific young man that really wants to please us as coaches. And, you know, he had that shot-blocking skill, which we knew uh, which we knew would, would carry over. He's much stronger now. He's been a blank canvas. He's learned the game. He knows when to come. He knows how to stay out of foul trouble now. And we feel like even, in, you know, two years from now, a year and a half from now, he's going to be as good offensively as he is defensively. And if that's the case, he's going to be a number one draft pick. What do you see from him offensively, Keith, since you work with him every day? How, how much has he improved since he got there? I I always was impressed with his passing ability. Well, I, I think the biggest thing is, Ray, he uh, he has a terrific jump hook both right and left hand. And I think the, the biggest problem with Zeke is, one, he doesn't have the mindset that he wants the ball on every play. And number two is, uh, number two is he doesn't realize how good he really is offensively. And uh, as he continues to get stronger and he's becoming very strong, I think you'll see a better offensive player. and uh, I, I just think he's just in the midst of learning the game. And, and uh, that's the thing that's kind of fun to watch is just watching it progress because I'll tell you what, even when he doesn't score a basket, he, he, he really affects the game in a way that there's not many in college basketball that can. Without a doubt. In that, in that MAC championship game last year, he might have changed. And I was telling Lauren before we got on with you, he might have changed 30 shots, and and I wasn't exaggerating. I mean, he really changes the way the offense sees the rim. Well, when you when you really analyze that game, he had zero blocks in the first half, and then he blocked uh, he blocked four in the second half and five in overtime. So he blocked nine shots in 25 minutes, and that doesn't even include the ones he changed. And if you watch this uh, Mississippi State game, he did the same thing in the first half just changed their mindset. They were jittery around the rim. They were big guys who couldn't score around the rim. Their little guys were looking around for him. And he's just a guy that just uh, that not many people have. I mean, Mississippi State has those two big monsters, but they can't do those two those things that Zeke does. Without a doubt. I mean, if, you, if you're talking about, it, it's kind of funny, a, a few years ago, and I, knew, I know Zeke was recruited by high major schools as well, but... I mean, you go back a few years and you, and you look at what people were saying about Renardo Sidney, and, and not to pick on him, but, but kids like that. And then you look at Zeke, and the tables have kind of changed now, haven't they? Well, they have, but you know, it's funny, and it, maybe it's a good thing for us, but he's still pretty far under the radar screen. People don't realize how good he really is, I think. And I, I think the good thing about that is, you know, he's been willing to learn. I think he's one of the few kids that really understood himself a little bit, and knew that he'd probably get swallowed up at the high major level. And, you know, you know, we kind of force fed him here. We had some good players, six, 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 seven guys when he came, and we just made the decision that we were going to live with him and put him out there and put him out there and put him out there until we got what we wanted out of him. And, you know, look, it's been good for us. We don't go to the NCAA tournament without him last year, and he allows us to, to beat the, the high majors this year. So, you know, we took a few hits early, but it's been well worth it. Without a doubt. Hey, uh, maybe the next NCAA tournament you guys get to, you can maybe get a, a fairer court to play on. What's You get Gonzaga and Portland, and then you get Notre Dame and Chicago. What's up with that? Well, hey, you know, that's, that's the seed we had. And we weren't a great team. We were, we were a good, solid team. And the one thing we've tried to do this year, Ray, is play a, a, a really difficult schedule. If you look at our schedule, we've got Mississippi State, and then we got to go to Valparaiso. And then we play Duquesne at Valparaiso, and then we, we come back and we play at West Virginia, at Middle Tennessee, at Cleveland State, and we're at Marshall, we have ECU. So we want to put our guys in position so that the next time we go to the NCAA tournament that we play that kind of competition and we feel a little more comfortable against it. Without a doubt. Hey, uh, what about some of the other kids? Nick Harney, what do you see in him? Uh, I know he got some, some good minutes the other night. He made some plays for you. He, he looks like another kid kind of in the digs role. He's very athletic, very long. Well, we like Nick Harney. Uh, we, you know, we, we think he's a terrific talent. He, he's, he's got 
got a knack not to back down in the game. You know, he's not a great practice player yet, and we've really worked hard with him on that. But he's a guy that we think is going to be one of the best players we've ever had here. We think Treadwell also, you know, who's, who's a young kid that hasn't played a lot of basketball, is going to be terrific for us also. And so we're, we're happy with our depth. We, we have to bring those young kids along. They have a lot to learn, really, to become after zips. We always tell them they're half a zips now. <laughs> we have to learn how to grind it out through the season and grind it out through practice and get that toughness level. And then, then we think we'll have something special. Now, now pre-game, is it, is it still the, the loosest locker room in the MAC? Do you still... Do you still like the guys to have fun and, and just go into the game ready to play on, on their own type of level? Well, when you were around, Ray, we had a pretty experienced team with Drew and those guys. And, and uh, you know, we haven't quite got to that point with these guys. We're trying to teach them the discipline that it takes to win games. But as you know, I kind of learned that through LeBron. LeBron was a guy that was loosey-goosey and he always played, so I, I learned that hey, they can be loosey goosey before the game, but when it's when it's game time, it's time to get busy. Well, tell that story if you can. Um, it was it was a big game you guys played at at at, at St. Vincent St. Mary, right? And and you, everyone was kind of tight. And isn't that when you decided, okay, maybe it's better to have them loose? Yeah, that team was a bunch of freshmen, and uh, I think yeah, that year they were freshmen, and we were loosey goosey and. I kind of learned that from Le- LeBron. Then we played Oak Hill Academy, who had Rashad Carruth and Jop and, and uh, Billy Edlin and millions of others. And, you know, we're playing them with our 6'2 center football player, Garden Jop. And, and we looked a little tight, and I said, Bron, you all right? And, you know, he proceeded to be the best player on the floor. But I liked it a little bit better when he was loose, so I let him do his own thing from then on. Without a doubt. Hey, um, how, how's how's things? And and I hesitate to ask because I have we haven't spoke about him in a while. But but how's your father doing, man? He's doing well. You know, he uh, you know, he's still upset that Pitt's much better than Duquesne. You know, I didn't <laughs> know he's a Duquesne Duke to heart. And, you know, when he was at Duquesne, Duquesne was much better. So it pains him, but he's doing well coming back from his uh, from his ailment. So he. he Almost back to normal. Good, good. That's good to hear. I saw I saw a video of him at the tournament last year, and and that was great to see. Just to see that he had been able to get out to Chicago and watch you guys play. That's good to have him. That's for sure. Hey, uh, can you talk a little bit about the city, Keith? About Akron? About you know your mom's influence at the university, um, and just kind of how you're ingrained there? Because I know that. I mean, for my money, you're one of the best coaches in college basketball. Uh, I, I feel like, you know, opportunities will be there for you if they haven't been. They probably have been, but there's a connection there to Akron, and, and you've kind of settled in and built a program. Can can you talk about all of that for me, if, if possible? Sure. Uh, my mom's actually from Pittsburgh, went to Carnegie Mellon, and then my dad went to Duquesne, and then they came here because my dad got a job at Ford, and my mom became a professor university in psychology and then I went to school here and uh, you know I just went to games here from the time I was four or five years old and uh, this is a special place for me there's not many guys that can you know go to a school where they played where their mother was a professor and, and you know their family is around so this is a, this is a very very special place for me uh, I have great belief in the program my daughter goes to school here I went to school here if my son's a good enough soccer player, which I don't know if he is, yeah. he'll play here, and he'll go to school here too, right? So we kind of believe in this place. We like the city. We like our friends. And, and we like what we have in our basketball program. So you know, I'm a guy that's just happy to be able to coach, and, I, and I'm very fortunate to be able to coach here. Hey, uh, how about your assistants? If I'm, if I'm a young assistant looking to make the next step, I, I'm. Do, does your phone just get blown up all the time because – how many guys has it been that you've you've ushered on to the high major ranks? Well, we've had three. We've had three pretty good coaches leave here, and we're fortunate that we still have some good ones here. I, you know, uh, the three that have left, Chaka Smart, obviously everybody knows, is at BCU, and he kind of helped us turn this program around, and you know, we're extremely proud of him. And then Jeff Bowles is at Ohio State as an assistant, and Lamont Paris is at Wisconsin, so those guys have done pretty well, but... We still have some good ones here. We got Dan Peters, who's been a head coach twice, uh, who you know has uh, is 
still here with us, and then Jerry Wygan has been with me from the beginning, and really we have we have five guys on our staff that have all played for me, so I'm very very fortunate to be surrounded by people that like me. <laughs> how how is how is Terry Wygan doing? I I miss that guy. Oh, that's my guy, as you know. That guy's like a brother to me, and you know he's been through some difficult times with his sick son, and uh, there's no tougher guy in America than him, and. Uh, you know, I have just the utmost respect for him as a basketball coach, and with him and Ricky McFadden, who's been here with me from the start, also, you know, we've, we've been very fortunate. They were they were both very kind to me when I was writing the book, as well as you, Keith. Uh, and and I won't forget that you guys were great, hospitable, and and a, a great time to hang out with. Hey, um, who, what do you see as far as I want to go back to Mississippi State as far as what your game plan might have been? And were you able to execute it, or was it something different that happened during the game that allowed you to win? No, we did pretty much what we wanted to do. You know, we wanted to go into the game and play man-to-man. We felt like, you know, we're probably one of the few mid-majors that could match up to them physically inside. You know, we're big and strong. We're not not built like we used to be, Ray, when you were around here. We're, we're a big, strong team now with, you know, with big, strong inside guys and bigger guards and we felt like that we could physically match up with them. Uh, we, you know, we kind of knew our team a little bit. Like, felt like intellectually, we're a little behind some of our other teams. Uh, we felt like athletically, we're a little bit better. We felt like toughness-wise, we're not quite as tough as we've been in the past. But our guys kind of showed us some things in that game, and, and we just felt like, uh, you know, that, that if we played a reasonably good game and really played hard on defense, and we would, we could could compete pretty well. We felt like our bench was a little bit better. Uh, they played kind of a light bench. And they're scary looking now. They're big and strong <laughs> with the point guard, the, the boss. They got some good players, but we just felt like uh, we've been in more big games than them maybe even. You know, we've been in more tournament games than them. Without a doubt, I had to go at a guy on Twitter, Keith. He, he uh, <laughs> I, I had made a comment about, you know, your your ability and Akron's ability as a team and and he said, well, it's about time they, they finally played somebody. So I, I had to go back and find all the teams you played in the last few years. I know that might have been a, a smart decision back in the day for you because it really didn't matter, you know, if you played a tough schedule or not, quite frankly, in the, in, in the MAC, It didn't seem like that was rewarded anyway. But in, in the last three, four years here, you guys have played, you, you've challenged yourselves out of conference. And like you said, this year it's gone to another level, I think. Uh, and, you know, Ray, it's funny because you know, everybody's got all the answers with scheduling. And, this yeah. and I probably made one year I thought I made a poor de- some poor decisions scheduling, and that was the year that Romeo Travis and Jeremiah Wood and Drew Joyce were seniors. Uh, Woody was a junior, but Romeo right. and Drew were, were seniors. And one of the reasons we, we did that is we wanted to play some home games. But, you know, we, we took over a program that never really had won that much in Division One basketball. So, in order to build this program, we felt like we had to win games in order to get better players and better players and better players. So I think we played pretty good schedules throughout. We, you know, maybe one year we made a we made a poor decision, but you know, we played in one year. I think we played Clemson, Mississippi State, Cal, Louisville, and Nevada. So I mean, yep. I think we played some good people. Now, you know, other people will argue that, but. You know, we, we did what we had to to make this into a good program, and we're, and we're going to continue to challenge it now. We're at the point now where I still have seven years on my contract, so I can be a little bit more like Charlie Coles now and playing everybody. <laughs> don't. But I don't want to play them all on the road. I think this year's difficult. I think next year will be even more difficult. We're going to Puerto Rico to play in the ESPN tournament there, and we've got Creighton, Cleveland State, and Detroit along with that, so like, we're going to get harder and harder and harder as we go. And hopefully my age can withstand that. Yeah, you don't want to go Charlie Cole's route. He's he's a masochist with the schedules he plays. My goodness, he he plays. Uh, I don't I don't think that's good for anybody really. And, and he did it because you know he wants to challenge himself to play against the best coaches and teams in the country, and I respect that. But I think it's difficult to win under those circumstances. Without a doubt, and and the other part of that, and we've talked about it before, but. You know, it, it'd be nice for Akron to get a high major on their floor once in a while, wouldn't it? It would, and you know, I've been begging Bobby to come, Huggins, uh, <laughs> you know, because he coached here. But you know, they're not—they're pretty smart. You know, yeah. They're a hard place to win. We won a lot of games here, so I don't know if that's ever going to happen. They may play us in Cleveland, you 
know, and uh, right. that would be good too. Right. And I don't blame them. I mean, look, it's, what, what's in it for them really when you think about it? No, it, like you said, it's smart of them not to do it until until the system is changed, and it probably won't be. It's there's no reason for them to play play a mid major at but their house. You know, we would like to get the Atlantic Tens in this building a little bit more. I think that's important in the Missouri Valleys. Right. You know, we're willing to do all of that stuff. Uh, I'd prefer not to go much further west than that. You know, especially with the financial crunch, you're better off to play as close to home as you can. Yeah, and I mean, like I said, I was talking on the the schedules the last few years. I mean, you've played really good teams. You played Temple. You played Rhodey a few times. VCU, like you mentioned, I mean Winthrop back in the day. You've all, I mean yeah. you you played some games now. We have. We just haven't played a lot of high major uh, high major people in their building. I just don't believe in that. I you know, I play one a year pretty much. Like we'll go to we'll go to West Virginia this year. We went to Minnesota. We played Miami and Florida last year. So I think we played a pretty good schedule. I mean, you know, people don't criticize you every chance they get and. My job is really to, to make this program a great program, and I, I think we've made it a pretty good program at this point. We want to take the next step. Hey, can you talk about the the rivalry? What's it like with you and Kent State? Because you're both, I mean, it, it used to be, and, and this is my opinion, you you can debate it if you want. It used to be they were the premier program in the MAC. I, th- I think you're both the two premier programs now. Um, what's that rivalry like? I mean, they, they, uh, they've done an unbelievable job over there. Since I've been there, they're on their third coach, and they've sustained it. They're good every year. They do a terrific job with their guys. They've been, they've been good for, what, about 13, 14 years now. Yep. And we've been good. This would be our eighth year of being pretty good now. And uh, it's fun to play. I mean, the fans hate each other. The players don't really care for one another, but the coaches kind of respect one another. And, uh, you know, Jimmy Christian is, the first guy we played against, uh, I have probably more respect for him than, than, than most coaches I've ever coached against. I think he's a terrific coach. And then Gino was great, and that rival takeover over there. But it's brutal now. I mean,